uh, as a Habs fan, I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, in admiration of, uh, of Toronto fans. I'm not going to say normal includes the Leaf with the Stanley Cup, but uh, uh, it does mean we're moving in the right direction. Hey everybody, I'm Dominic Zerproni here with my pal Will DeBride. The only problem with him is that he's a Habs fan. A little lost along the way. But we're going to talk about some hockey right now and hope you uh, sit down and join us and enjoy it. Damn, Dom, when did you get the sweater? Oh, dude, this is a new, this is one of those retro reverse sweaters. Because <laughs> last time we spoke, I think you only had the underwear. I only had the what? Toronto Maple Leafs underwear. <laughs> did you write that one down? First of all, it's not a freaking jersey. It's a sweater. True hockey fans call them sweaters. No. Did you know that the playoffs were going to start while you were in Florida, Will? <laughs> Well, I thought I was going to be here like three weeks or a month, so no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you didn't expect the Habs to make the playoffs. Maybe that's the real reason you didn't take your well, sweater. I did, I did expect them to miss, make the playoffs. I just did not expect to still be here in, in May. Well, I'm excited anytime the Leafs A make the playoffs, so that's the first thing. Uh, I'm excited because I think we actually have a chance at winning the first round since 2004. Yeah. That's another thing. Um, and I think, you know, there is something special between Habs and Leafs fans. There always has been. There always will be. It's you have immigrants who came to Canada. You know, my grandparents came to Canada. They had to choose a team. You know, they chose, you choose either the Leafs or the Habs, you know. And uh, it depended on kind of how far into Canada you, you immigrated. Western, Western Canada was, yeah, pretty much... There was a lot of Western Canadians that liked the Habs, but yeah, I would say that, you know, Western Canada was kind of Maple Leaf area. But back yeah. in the day, when they, back in the day, though, the Canadians were so good, I think that the Canadians built a really good uh, following out West, though, for the longest time until the Canucks came along. I think Vancouver didn't like Toronto right. as a city. I don't think Vancouver liked Toronto as a city. They don't. And here's the thing. Like, this is what I was saying. Like, you go to Montreal, or you go to a Toronto game, Toronto game, Montreal, Montreal game, wherever, you see Leafs and Habs fans sitting next to each other. Yeah. You go to Vancouver, you don't see any Leafs and Canucks fans sitting next to each other. Almost none. Can Canucks and Can Canucks and, and, and Habs fans. No, Canucks and Habs or Canucks and Leafs fans. Like, they're, oh. they, they don't like each other. They oh, really I see. don't like each other. Yeah. Hmm. Like, and it's yeah. mostly because you go to Vancouver and you realize how hated the Leafs are when you go to Vancouver. And it's like, wow, we didn't even realize the Canucks yeah, yeah, were yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 But no, the, the that's why I say there's a real rivalry with that. I've been, been to been. Vancouver to a bunch of Canadians games and it's pretty, it's pretty uh, mild uh, hatred. Yeah, it's not very strong. But if you go to Toronto, yeah, the history is, is backed up there. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I generational you know, within families. Having read the uh, Ken Dryden's book, The Game, you know, he said he was always pissed off at uh, at the owner. Was his name Balfour or Balfour? Uh, Ballard, Harold Ballard. Ballard, Ballard. Yeah, he was always pissed off with Ballard because he screwed up the the, the Maple Leafs so bad that you know when Dryden was a kid they were a good team and when he got to the NHL they sucked and so it was always just like a pushover to go into Toronto. He wanted to like have some rivalry and there was nothing left. Yeah. Well, they, cause Ballard didn't care about the success of the team. That team sold out regardless of what they put on the ice. They've got a product on the ice right now that ever, that you're excited about. You know, you got a, the guy, you got Matthews who they, they draft number one draft pick and, you know, became the, he's going to win the Rocket Richard uh, trophy this year. I mean, it's been an abbreviated weird season, but, Dude's special player, and Toronto hasn't had a guy on the ice who they can say is a real special player in his prime since maybe Sundin, you know, back 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, – yeah, and you actually have guys from Ontario that want to come back and play for the Leafs for the first time in a long time. That's true, you know? too. Yeah. yeah. So – uh, yeah, so that was the knock on the um, the Habs. I read someone say, "There's was it you that posted that? There's no French Canadian players on the roster." Yeah, so they, for the first time in 112 years, there was no uh, uh, Quebecois French player on the, uh, the starting lineup the other night. Surprising! Oh, just for the starting lineup, just for the five or the six yeah. on the ice. 
Well, no, in the lineup, in, in the lineup at all. Like, I mean, I meant the, the roster that night, that game, the whole entire 24 man bench didn't have a French Canadian player at all. Wow. That's pretty yeah. crazy. It is. Yeah. But it was interesting though. Cause then you start researching about all that. And, you know, I think, I think there was, only, I think there's only 35 French Canadians in the league right now. Is there? So, yeah. You know, back in the day, it was like 60%. Yeah. They produced some amazing hockey players out of Montreal, out of Quebec, rather. Yeah, um, yeah man, I, I'm, I'm stoked. I honestly feel like, uh, like, how did your fandom begin? Do you remember, like, your what's your first memory of being a Habs fan? Uh, well, I came back uh, from, we came back from Africa, and I was seven years old, and my dad took me to a hockey game, and he took me, you know, to a baseball game, and I became immediately hooked on the Expos and Canadians. Um, you know, it was easy. I think if you were growing up, I don't know, there was a couple of my friends that for some reason, like loved the Rangers or the Bruins, but it was 99% easy to be a Montreal Canadiens fan growing up in Quebec in the seventies. Sure. I mean, they were winning cups every year. So it was like, you, you just, it was ridiculous. You just expected it. Even the mayor was like, you know, the famous story of him saying at the beginning of the year that the, the Stanley cup parade will take its usual route at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how confident they were. Yeah. Uh, but you just had, you know, like that 72 team, you know, you had the most uh, hall of famers in one lineup, you know, it's just insane in history. Mm -hmm. So and it just continued through the late seventies until Dryden retired and Jacques Lemaire became the coach and started screwing things up for us uh, by getting all defensive and, you know, uh, more defense oriented on his, on his team. Um, so yeah, I found, I found that the game started to change for the Canadians in the mid eighties. It never really was the same. You know, we got lucky in 92 for sure, which is kind yeah, of in the nineties. You guys were good. Yeah, but I mean, 92, we were like a shit, or 92, 93, we were kind of not a very good team going in. I think we didn't, I think we won like one game in the last six games of the year. Hmm. And, uh, you know, that was the year that they couldn't lose in overtime. You know, they won like 10 overtime games, everything was going into overtime. So, you know, I was, you know, there for all that. That was just, uh, you know, it was easy. It was easy. I mean, it was probably frustrating hmm. to be a, uh, Leafs fan <laughs> in the early well, years. I mean, my, my uncle gave me my first jersey probably when I was six. And uh, and I was already a fan before that. I know. I mean, anything can happen. Plus, you know, since uh, Ducharme has been coached this year, they've had literally, I think, like maybe three practices. It's insane because of their COVID mm. schedule. You know, mm. they, they were they missed a couple of games because of COVID. And then when they came back, they were they played some ridiculous amount of games and a ridiculous amount of short time. And so they've hardly had any practice time. So the fact that they've had, you know, seven or eight days off, I think bodes well. I actually do think that price coming back is like the best thing that could happen to us. Gallagher sure. Weber. I mean, you know, uh, Weber is going to be rested because I think he was yeah. getting tired. I think he does, he was, but I think Weber being back, so, you know, I, I saw, I, worry, I think for you guys, the, the days off because of this, the Canucks schedule because of the COVID thing is, is going to help you guys more than it's going to help. I us think so I think too. I think it's so. going to be rust for us and rest for you guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's going to be, uh, I think they needed that practice with the coach, make sure everybody's on the same page, try to get their lineup straightened out. Cause they really haven't, you know, been able to make solid lineup changes. Uh, the bubble. Yeah. I think, I think playing each other 10 times was maybe a little bit, a little too much, much too much but i think that's why this will be interesting just uh i mean they know each other really well but on the other hand like dom says playoffs are a whole different ball game i mean for some reason it just uh you what know, i've price, noticed is price is strong when the chips are down too for sure for sure and the leafs are going in with with the guy who's Again, the book is probably out on Campbell at this point, but yeah. he's he's still playing amazing hockey, but he's totally unproven in these kind of situations. But well, that's what I the, think. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was coming out so strong, but I think if that first game, if they can ruin his confidence in that first game, I think it's a whole different oh, series. It could be tough. I mean, at least you got Anderson healthy, sort of healthy and able to come back in. But the the bubble thing, it's it sucks that the fans 
we're never able to get in there because yeah. I think Will's right to, to play each other 10, 12 times, whatever it was. Without like I watched game. every, I watched every game because it was my team and stuff. I ended up watching a lot of games because I just wanted to watch hockey. But, you know, you see some of these American playoff games the last two days and the, there's only 10,000 people in there, but man, are they going ape shit, you know? And yeah. it's, even if, even if the, the guy, I think, I think those games became tough to play because these guys were tired. I think, I think the, the, the back and forth with the same teams with, with that, without that extra element in the stands was, yeah. was really probably tough to kind of get up every night to play these same teams. Right. See, my concern is like the Leafs look great all year, but it's like, how do they stack up against Vegas, Carolina, um, Pittsburgh, Florida. You know what I mean? There's some good That's a million-dollar question. I mean, it's so unknown right now. You like, right. Everybody's talking about how the Northern Division is so weak. Which I don't think it is, because I don't think the Habs are weak. I don't think the Leafs are weak. I don't even think the Canucks, you can't say they're weak. They went pretty far. They went pretty deep last, year, last season in the bubble. Mm-hmm. You know, like you got – I think it's not as weak as people think it is. I was looking at that, those, uh, uh, you know, the, the professionals that were making their picks and there wasn't one guy. <laughs> what is that? What year was that? What's that from? 1951? <laughs> you know, it's funny. A fan gave me this. It's from, it's, it's actually says 1963 on the bottom, but it, I think my kids broke it. So I have to glue it back together for the run, <laughs> okay. but no, nobody's picking the Canadians. Not one, not, not one. No. Nobody. So that's why I think the Canadians can be dangerous. I think they're probably a little pissed off that they got like zero respect. Yeah, maybe, but, but you can't, you don't even know how good you are. You haven't had your number one goalie in, you know, you have, you, you, there's no way you can. For the first time this, maybe for the, I think at the earlier in this year, when the Habs took off, came out of the gate flying, we had an entire team. We haven't had the entire team until the playoffs started, you know, since, and now, Luckily enough, we have the entire team back. I mean, we almost have too many choices now, especially right. with Caulfield and I can't wait. This is the first. Oh. This is the first time in 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 my lifetime. Well, not first time. So I guess in '93, I thought we had a real shot when we lost to the Kings, yeah. and that broke me man I, I almost i was in tears you know like in my living room my buddy's sitting there he's like what are you crying for i'm like oh <laughs> this is the first time i can honestly say they they might have the pieces they might have the grit that that sandpaper element that they they haven't had in years plus s- speed and goal scoring the only question mark for me at this point right now is is in goal and i and i think otherwise you know there, there's no reason why they can't well, that was, in, that was, you know, what I said was sort of piggybacking a little bit on what Steve Schutt said, you know, he was telling Cole Caulfield, you know, he's like, listen, don't, don't pass the puck so much, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're a shooter, you're a scorer, just shoot the freaking puck, you know, yeah. don't think you, you've got the instincts, you've got the shot, just do it. But he was saying, you know, when they had that mindset of winning Stanley Cups, the one thing they talked about in the, in the, in the dressing room was do not give the other team any chance whatsoever to even come close. Just finish them off quickly so they just lose their confidence, you know, like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's why I'm like, you know, if, if the guys can – you got, I'm glad we got Gallagher, Gallagher back. I mean, uh, Armia, those guys don't mind standing in front of the net a little bit. So hopefully uh, – So you actually think you guys can win, I mean, I know you guys are favored and you guys are by far, by far the better team this year. But I think, you know, we do right. have a chance. I, do, I think we have a decent chance, actually. Well, like you say, everyone's got a chance. The playoffs are completely different. Goaltending becomes a huge issue and defensive-minded hockey takes the the forefront. So I think if goal they do scoring it, they do. is down. And Yeah. I think if they do it, they do it in six games, the Canadians. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? I don't know if Dom and I can bet because I'm in Florida. I can't even actually bring him a case of beer. Odd, Rebecca delivered a case of beer. Uh, okay. But I could not find any Canadian beer in California anywhere. Nowhere. Nowhere. I just had Moosehead the other day. Remember, did you ever drink yeah. Moosehead? 
Yeah, I have. I couldn't even find that back, back in uh, like before I came out here. So December, January. I did. A buddy of mine back. showed up with a, with a case for me for my birthday. He's like, it's the only Canadian beer I could find. Like, yeah, oh, it's impossible. But yeah. so then I get, you know, I kind of put a picture out on Twitter. I was like, oh, my God, I got Canadian beer for the game. And they're like, uh, Molson is the beer you should be drinking. I'm like, come down to Florida and tell me if you can find some Molson down here. Why? What Canadian beer did you have? The Labatt. Labatt Blue. What's wrong with Labatt Blue? That's well, Canadian no, it's beer. because it's Molson hockey, you know, all that junk, you know, the Molson. Ah. Yeah. No, you take yeah. what you can get down here. Beggars exactly. can't be choosers, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, if I could get, uh, if I win, if the Leafs take this series, no, if the, it, no, if the Leafs take the series, you got to get me something. If the Habs would take the series, I got to get you something. I would get you, you know, my grandfather used to, did you ever drink Volson Stock Ale? Yeah. Yeah. It's you been remember a that long beer? Time. That, that's the beer you'll get. Where are you going to find that? In Hamilton, bro. I'll get my family to pick it up for me. Uh, you, can't ship it still around. you can't ship it across the border. You might be oh, we'll smuggling. I might have a good old Maple Leaf card that's been signed. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll give you that. Ooh. I like that. The Canadians would not be the Canadians without the Maple Leafs, and the Maple Leafs would not be the Maple Leafs without the Canadians. That's just the that's way. True. It's the same thing with the Yankees and the Red Sox. You you know, it's like ABC. You need them all to. <laughs> go, Leafs, go! Abs. <laughs>